the total of the payment of rewards is only 4,282,000. Again, if we compare this to the total amount of confidential fund, which is 15,540,000 pesos, ang question, saan naman po kaya nadala itong nawawalang 11 million 258,000 pesos. I wish to express my frustration along with the other members of this committee for not being able to ask questions to our resource speakers from the office of the OVP. I just hope that they realize that the committee is providing them an ample due process, an avenue for them to be able to refute, to belie the findings that we have established already. But they prefer not attending the hearing rather than giving their due explanation to all the issues which have been raised already. Mr. Chair, after the last hearing of the Committee on Blue Ribbon, the Vice President held a press conference, although apparently she did not address squarely the findings that we have established already, among others, is the huge cost of rentals for the safe houses, most especially the 16 million confidential fund that was used in 11 days for the safe houses. Second, the confirmation of Attorney Osias with regards to the receipt of DepEd envelope payola which has been testified to already in the previous hearings by USEC Mercado. And third is the denial of the AFP of having received any fund from the DepEd with respect to the Youth Leadership Summit and the information and education campaign which were conducted. Nonetheless, Mr. Chair, there is one remark of the Vice President which indeed captured the attention of this representation. And if I can ask the Secretary to please play this video clip of the press con. Since we're having some technical problem, let me share with you what she said during that press con. She said that the DepEd Confidential Fund ay ginamit para magbigay ng impormasyon sa militar at sa local government units kung saan dapat gawin ang Youth Leadership Summits at ang Information Education Campaign. First of all, Mr. Chair, I find it really strange. A civilian office like the Department of Education is the one which will be providing a confidential information to the military and the LGU with respect to national security. Hindi po ba Baligtad ito, Mr. Chair, because it is indeed the mandate of the AFP to promote and secure the national security and interest of our country. Pero dito po sa naging pronouncement ng ating Vice Presidente, she said, ang confidential fund ng Department of Education 
ay ginamit para magbigay ng impormasyon sa militar at sa LGU kung saan dapat gawin ang Youth Leadership Summits at ang Information Education Campaign. Mr. Chair, I wish to invite the attention of the committee to the certifications that were issued by the AFP and were submitted by the DepEd to COA in support of the utilization of the DepEd Confidential Fund. And the same provides YLS and IECs are conducted to prevent recruitment of teachers and students by terrorists and insurgents. May we request Attorney Camora to please confirm kung ito nga po ba ay nakasaad sa certifications ng AFP. Attorney Camora. Mr. Chair. The certification submitted by AFP to DepEd and which were subsequently submitted by DepEd to COA in support of the utilization of the DepEd Confidential Fund provides, among others, that YLS and IECs are intended to prevent recruitment of teachers and students by insurgents and rebels. Um, that is what is contained in the certification. So Mr. you Chair. confirm? Yes, Mr. Chair. And uh, having said so, Mr. Chair, we must understand that there are four existing programs of DepEd. And I wish to know also from COA, sang program po ba pumasok ito? Because we have to understand that each program has their corresponding expenditure of the confidential fund. Can we please flash each program along with the corresponding expenditures? The program includes counterinsurgency, abuse prevention and control, anti-illegal activities, and anti-extremist or terrorism activities. Ang bawat programa pong ito ay may kanya-kanyang expenditures ng confidential fund. And if we can show this table, Secretariat, please. The table shows that for counterinsurgency program, first quarter, DepEd spent two million, and second quarter, DepEd spent two million fifty thousand. The second program is abuse prevention and control within schools, and expenditures for first quarter. 2.130 million. Second quarter is 2.370 million. Anti-illegal activities. First quarter, 1.5 million. And second quarter, 1.7 million. And for anti-extremism, first quarter, 1.8 million. And second quarter, 1.8 million. I understand, Mr. Chair, that the YLS and the education information campaign has to fall in any of these programs. And considering the purpose that was indicated in the certification submitted to COA, I wish to believe na ito pong mga YLS na to at IECs na to ay part ng counterinsurgency program. Tama po ba ito, Attorney Camora? Uh, tama po, Mr. Chair. And having said that, Attorney Camora, ang total expenditures po for the counterinsurgency program is only 4 million 50,000 pesos when the amount utilized is 15 million 540,000 pesos. Mayroon pong nawawala. 10,490,000 pesos. Saan po kaya napunta itong diprensya ng nasabing amount? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, we considered the entirety since ang sabi naman po, um, focus on protecting the schools and the youth, the youth from physical harm, criminalities, terrorism, and drug abuse. So, hindi na lang po siya sa counterinsurgency. Mr. Chair, is it the intention of Attorney Camora to to consider that the entire amount utilized, that is 15 million 40,000, were spent in all these four programs of DepEd? Is that what you are trying to say, um, Attorney Camora? The fund was used for the payment of rewards po in relation to these four programs. Yes, so, but there okay. are four programs of the DepEd under which the utilization must fall. Kaya ang tanong ko po sa inyo kanina, when the certification provides that YLS and IECs are conducted to prevent recruitment of teachers and students by extremists and terrorists, ito po ba ay tamang nasa ilalim ng counterinsurgency program? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Because and if so... Since most of the expenses, or I, I should say all, of the 15,540,000 was utilized for this YLS and IECs, ang napapaloob pong expenditures for counterinsurgency program is only 4,050,000. Hinahanap ko po, Attorney Camora. San po napunta? yung 10,490,000. Ayun nga po. Um, actually, binase din po namin sa certification na they've made, they've made mention that it is to protect the schools and the students from physical harm, criminalities, terrorism, which is one of the, ano, and drug abuse po. So, then, then why did they not indicate those purposes in the certifications? Uh, it's on the certification po. I'm reading from the certification po. The certification provide for prevention of recru recruitment by the terrorists and rebels. Am I correct, attorney? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Ano pa po bang ibang purpose ang nakasaad sa certification? Mayroon pa po bang ibang purpose? Uh, nakalagay po kasi... Um, also, because of this exchange of information, we were able to perform our civil military combat and intelligence operations in our AOR with focus on protecting the schools, their students, and the youth from physical harm, criminalities, terrorism, and drug abuse. So from your so, point of view, Attorney Tamora, saang program po ba napapaloob itong YLS? at IECs? Um, so, uh, uh, anti-insurgency. If you are saying that this falls under the anti-insurgency program, ano naman pong activities kaya ang kinondak ng DepEd in line with their abuse prevention, anti-illegal activities, and anti-extremism? Based din po dito sa ano, YLS, yun pong other, other, ano, other purposes ng YLS. In other words, Attorney Tamora, you will agree with me that all the certifications pertain to YLS and IECs only. Um, pero meron pong other purpose po kasi silang nilagay sa certification. Then please enlighten us what activity falls under abuse prevention. What activity falls under anti-illegal activities? I think the YLS activities also included, um, yun nga po, uh, lectures on drug abuse, criminalities. Are you, not, are you not particular about defining, identifying, sang programa po ba ito na papaloob? How, um, how are you able to account the expenditures if you are not even aware kung saan programa kasama yung mga activities ng DepEd? I think that was not part of the ano po, yung naging part nung review nito. Dahil nung nagpasubmit po kami ng uh, itong sa rewards, 
I will raise the same question for the last time, Attorney. You were saying that the YLS and the IEC fall under counterinsurgency program. Yes, yes Mr. And that Chairman. is only 4 million 50,000. Yes, Mr. Way Chairman. below the 15 million 40,000 confidential fund that was utilized by DepEd. What therefore are the activities that fall under abuse prevention first? Mr. Chair, um, ito lang po yung naging basis namin, Mr. Chair. I understand that this 15 million is not even a subject matter of an AOM or an ND. Tama po ba ako? It was a subject matter of AOM po. And then what happened with the AOM? And then this is their answer, yung certification po. And you simply adopted this? Adopt? Uh, yes po. Okay. And you agree with me that it is not clear with COA kung anong activity ang pumasok in every or each of the four programs. Um, hindi na po namin kinategorize, Mr. Chair. I wish to invite the attention of the committee to the total amount spent for all these programs. Nasa ilalim po. First quarter is 7.5, and then second quarter is 8.31. How can you give us a clear presentation on how this 15 million was utilized if you could not identify under which program every activity falls? Ano po bang ibig sabihin ng pagtango nyo, attorney? Um, yun po, hindi ko po, hindi po na-consider nung nag-evaluate uh, po na i-categorize siya according to the programs of the DepEd. But can you confirm to us, yun po bang certifications na sinasabi nyo, which is stated that YLS and IECs are intended to prevent recruitment? Pare-parehas po ba yan? O may iba pa pong purpose na nabanggit? Ayun po, yung isang yung isang certification may ganun pong nakalagay na other purpose. How many certifications are we talking about attorney? For the entire 15 million 40,000 pesos confidential fund of DepEd. Uh, Mr. Chair, dalawa lang po. Dalawang certification lang po. And I think it will be very easy with you at least to categorize. Attorney Tamora, Kamora, san po bang program na pasama yan? Dadalawa naman pala. Can you please read the purpose of the first certification? Um, these combined activities benefited 1,300 participants for the YLS and 8,754 students for the IEC. These collaborative efforts with the DepEd, Region 1, NICA, Regional Office 1, and OPAPRU were conducted to insulate the students from exploitation by the communist terrorist groups and inform them of the ills of terrorism and communi communism. Would you and agree first, with me that that is counterinsurgency program? Yes, Mr. How Chair. much is the amount indicated? There is no amount indicated in this particular There is no amount indicated. How about the other certification? Can you please read to us? The only the first ano, purpose po, kasi Mr. Chair, uh, there is a second purpose in this one. What is, is the second purpose? Yung first po na binasa ko na about uh, criminality, terrorism, and drug abuse. And then, is there any third and fourth purposes? No, Mr. Chair. Wala na, first okay. and second. Yes, Mr. So in Chair. other words, the certifications provide first is the counterinsurgency and second, it encompasses the three other remaining programs. Yes, Mr. Chair. However, I wish to manifest, Mr. Chair, that the COA should be able to identify under which program each expenditures fall because if I will be basing our interpretation to the certification which states as primary purpose that the YLS and IECs are conducted to prevent recruitment, then it means 
that the program which is being implemented by DepEd is the counterinsurgency program. And considering that the amount which was spent for this program is only 4,050,000, I wish to be enlightened magkano kaya yung nagastos for the abuse prevention, magkano kaya ang nagastos para sa anti-illegal activities, at magkano kaya ang nagastos para sa anti-extremism. It is my humble submission, Mr. Chair, that the COA should be able to identify this to be able to give a clear presentation and account of the public funds which were utilized by the Office of the Department of Education. Mr. Chair, moving to my second observation. The DepEd Confidential Fund, according to the Vice President, was used to obtain information where military and LGU should hold the YLS and IEC. Again, I find this strange. Na baligtad na po. Because the office which has the mandate on addressing the national security and interest is the AFP, the Office of the National Defense. So I wish to believe that matters concerning national security I must marami pong information ang DND compared to the Department of Education. But strangely, ang nakasaad po dito, ang confidential fund ng DepEd ay ginagamit para makakuha ng impormasyon at masabihan ang military kasama na ang LGU saan kayo magkokondak ng Youth Leadership Summits at Information Education Campaign. Nonetheless, Mr. Chair, I wish to believe na dapat mayroon pong correlation ang source ng information at ang site or recipient ng YLS and IEC. Can we request the Secretariat to please flash the graph, the pie, Mr. Chair, the payment of rewards indicated in our graph shows, or should I say, is not consistent with the location of the recipient where the YLS and the IEC were conducted. Ang sabi po dito sa ating graph, nagkaroon ng payment of rewards sa Sambuanga del Norte, sa Sambuanga del Sur, sa Sambuanga Sibugay, sa Basilan, even in Sulu, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, La Union, Bulacan, Nueva Ecija, Zambales, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, Albay, Sorsogon, Masbate. However, Mr. Chair, the total of the payment of rewards is only 4,282,000. Again, if we compare this to the total amount of confidential fund, which is 15,540,000 pesos. Ang question, saan naman po kaya nadala itong nawawalang 11,258,000 pesos? Can we ask Attorney Tamoria? Tamor Camora? Mayroon po ba kayong nakita sa inyong pag-audit? Saan ho ba nagkaroon ng YLS and IEC na hindi consistent sa location ng payment of reward? Um, Mr. Chair, yung location ng YLS and IEC is based on the certification po. These are the areas covered po nung activities. On the other hand, sa DEP po, yung payment of rewards 
Uh, pwede po kasing yung informant is nasa ibang lugar or address po kasi niya yon or address niya kung saan man siya that is a possibility okay. but i am certain that you were not able to inquire about that information anymore we don't we don't inquire po beyond the i uh, understand but are you really allowed to assume um kasi what you are telling us is just an assumption Pwede po na ang source of information ay nakatera sa Batangas. At magbibigay po siya ng impormasyon tungkol po sa Sambuanga del Norte. How do you think a person residing in Batangas will be familiar on what is going on in Sambuanga del Norte? Um, that is a personal ano lang po. But actually po, uh, table audit lang po talaga ang audit ng confidential funds. So, it's talaga po kung ano yung sinabmit na documents. In other words, Attorney Camora, you do not pay attention anymore even when the source of information are residing in places far from the site of the Youth Leadership Summits and the Information and Education Campaign. Hindi na po namin pinagtugma your... But were you able to to see and observe these inconsistencies during your auditing? Nakita nyo po ba yun? I believe so. That is why you stated earlier na pwede naman pong nakatira sa ibang lugar and he will be giving information about another place. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. But You observe it during the auditing, but you did not conduct any further inquiry as to the correlation between the source of the information and the recipient or the location of the recipient of the YLS and the IECs. Do you agree? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Hindi nyo na po pinansin. Mr. Chair, to conclude, dito po sa dalawang slides na ating ipinakita, if we will be anchoring our analysis on the programs of DepEd, it will appear that only 4,250,000 was spent for the counterinsurgency program, Mr. Chair. And therefore, there remains an unaccounted amount equivalent to 10,490,000 out of the total confidential fund, which is 15 million five hundred forty thousand meanwhile mr chair if we will be anchoring our analysis on the location of the source of information and the location of the recipients of the youth leadership summits and the information and education campaign what is consistent with respect to their location is equivalent only to the amount of four million 282,000 pesos. So, it, there remains also an unexplained amount of 10,490,000 pesos. Nasaan naman po kaya itong amount na ito? Mr. Chair, in conclusion, I wish to believe that the confidential fund of the Department of Education was not properly recorded at its best or misspent or misappropriated at its worst. It is the humble submission of this representation that there is a prima facie case of malversation and in addition an apparent case of breach of public trust. For us to be able to know whether there is malversation, four elements must be present. Number one, there must be a public official. Two, he is the custodian of fund. Three, the fund must be for public purpose. And fourth, the public official took, appropriated, misappropriated 
or consented or through abandonment or negligence permitted another person to take them. For the information of the public, ang malversation po can be done intentionally. We call it dolo, which is with criminal intent. And it can be done as well by negligence. We call it culpa or by negligence. In other words, with or without criminal intent. If the four elements are present, which I believe they are present, there's a prima facie case of malversation. With respect to the breach of public trust, this is the violation of public's confidence in a public officer's ability to serve with integrity, impartiality, and in accordance with law. Public trust is mandated by no less than the fundamental law of the land. That is the Philippine Constitution. We wish to express our utmost trust and confidence to the 19th Congress of the Philippines in addressing the apparent infractions of our rules on malversation and breach of public trust. And to the Filipino people, Mr. Chair, rest assured that this committee will legislate the necessary laws to safeguard not only confidential fund, but all public funds. As likewise, we commit to recommend the filing of the necessary actions against people found liable for committing these infractions. Thank you, Mr. Chair.